Hello everyone, in this session we are going to focus on the fourth and last adjustment, which is accrued revenues. Unlike unearned revenues, which is the second adjustment, which involve getting paid before performing the work, accrued revenue is kind of the opposite. You do the work first, then you will be paid later. So accrued revenues represent income that you have earned but haven't yet received in cash. Think of a receivable. It means you have provided the goods or the services, but the payment is on the way. As a business, this is a good position to be in because all what you have to do is wait for the cash. You already generated the income. You already performed the work. So because this account involves revenues, it's subject to fraud and cooking the books. For the auditors, when they audit a company, their job is to confirm that account receivable is real. And auditors use different strategies and tools for that purpose. It's beyond the scope of this course, but accrued revenues is an interesting account in the real world. In this session, we will focus on how to prepare journal entries for recording accrued revenues and receiving the payment, and how would the accrued revenues influence your income? How is it reflected on the financial statement? Also, accrued revenues is important for the matching principle. You are matching revenues in the proper period. So let's go ahead and dive into accrued revenues. And at the end, we'll work a multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com to reinforce the knowledge. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's go ahead and dive deeper into accrued revenues. Accrued revenues are revenues that have been earned, and that's important because you cannot have a revenue if the revenue have not been earned. So what's so special about accrued revenues? Well, Let's look at a simple example for revenues before we proceed. Usually what we like to see is this. When we do the work, when we earn the revenue, what we like to see, we would like to see cash going up by $1,000, revenues going up by $1,000. Let's call this, in quote, regular or normal revenue. So what is special about accrued revenues? Accrued revenues are revenues that have been earned, so far so good, by a company, by an individual, by an entity, but have not yet have not yet been recorded in, in its account because the cash has not yet been received. So you did the work, so so we check this entry. Revenues have been earned, however we don't have the cash. Well, what does that mean? What did we learn about this? We already kind of know this. If we have revenues and we don't have the cash, what do we increase? we increase accounts receivable. And this is accrued revenues. Accrued revenues happens when a business provide goods or service and that customer will pay later, promise to pay later. And the journal entry would look some, something like this. Let's assume we earned 2000. Account receivable will go up, revenues will go up. So this is the typical, not the typical, this is how we book, this is how we book accrued revenues, debit account receivable, credit revenues. Account receivable is an asset, revenues is an income statement. Now let's take a look at an example for Farhat Lectures. Let's assume on December 12, 20X5, Farhat Lectures agreed to provide consulting services for 30 days. Well, that's what they agreed on. They said, we're going to provide consulting services for 30 days. The customer to pay $3,000 January 10th, year X6. So we are preparing adjustments for December 31st, X5. So 20 days before the year end, we signed a contract. We agreed with a customer to provide 30 days of consulting services for them, but the customer will not pay us till January 10th. So what's going to happen is this. From December 12 till December 31st, 
we did work we did work we did work and we earned Farhat lectures earned 20 out of the 30 days of the contract what does that mean it means if if the deal is for 3000 that's what we agreed on and we earned two-thirds or 20 divided by 30 we have earned we have earned two thousand dollar we earned two thousand dollar we assume we did the work that's what we're assuming here we earned two thousand dollar what does that mean it means we debit account receivable two thousand you guessed it we credit revenues two thousand now remember we already have revenues of six thousand three hundred now we're gonna add we're gonna add uh, we're gonna add revenues to it six thousand three hundred plus two thousand is eight thousand three hundred now obviously we had zero of account receivable now we're gonna have two thousand of account receivable if this adjusting entry was not made two things would have happened our account receivable would have been understated and our revenues would have been understated as well or underreported and this is not good you want to show more assets you want to show more assets and you want to show more revenues generally speaking so the entry will be debit account receivable 2000 credit revenues 2000 so account receivable is an asset revenues is an income statement again this is an adjusting entry it affects both the balance sheet and the income statement let's take a look at the worksheet from the worksheet perspective we have account receivable of zero we have revenues of 6300 now remember from the prior recording we have more revenues from the unearned revenue but we're going to assume again i'll show you the total at the end so what happened in the, under this circumstances we debited account receivable and we credited revenue again i just want to let you know that we have more revenues but this is what the asterisk is to remind me to remind you there's more revenues but we're keeping it simple here we're focusing on one journal entry at a time the account receivable we went from zero we debited account receivable as an adjustment 2000 the ending balance is 2000 consulting revenue we started with 6300 now we also had an additional adjustment but we're going to ignore that and the additional adjustment i'm going to tell you in case you looked at the recording i believe it was 900 dollars. but don't worry about this so you know i did not forget about this plus 2,000 is 8, uh, 6,300 plus 2,000 equal to 8,300. This is the adjusted balance. We're going to see later on the revenue will have a different adjusted balance because it was adjusted twice. And I'm only showing you one adjustment. So this is the adjustment. This is what happened on December 31st. These are the balances. Now, remember, this customer agreed to pay January 10th, year X6. So let's take a look at when the customer pays us the three thousand dollar when the customer pays the three thousand we increase cash by three thousand now remember of that three thousand we already booked two thousand of account receivable so we reduce account receivable by two thousand therefore account receivable becomes zero now in 20x6 we we worked from january 1st till january 10th we earned 10 days Therefore, we have revenues of $1,000 for 20x6. So as far as revenues, here's what happened. Total revenues from this project was $3,000. $2,000 of this revenue took place in X5. This is the $2,000 that we made the adjustment for. And $1,000 is only recorded in year X6. Now you're going to see later when we start X5, this $2,000 will be gone. And you're going to see why later because this account is closed. But I'm showing you this. So I, so you see that in total we earned $3,000 of revenue. So you're, you want to make sure we get paid $3,000. Total revenue is $3,000. Temporarily we had $2,000 of account receivable. And that receivable was received in cash. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company accrued $5,000 in March and recorded it correctly. Okay. Uh, it means they debited account receivable $5,000. They credited revenues $5,000. The customer pays the amount in April. How much of the company should record the receipt? How much? How should the company record the cash receipt in April? Simply put, what's the cash receipt in April? Well, let me show you. We're going to debit cash 5000 What do we credit in April? We credit account receivable. This question is tricky because not tricky for some, some students. What they say is, well, I received the cash. I should have the revenue in April. No, the revenue took place. The revenue took place in March. And this is the purpose of this. 
The revenue took place in March. I told you the revenue was appropriately recorded in March. That's it. The, the revenue is recorded once. Once I receive the money, I don't have a revenue anymore. So is it A, debit cash, credit account receivable? And the answer is yes. The problem is some students debit cash and they credit sales revenue. No, the revenue was recorded in March. It was recorded appropriately. And the other one are incorrect because we credited cash. That's incorrect. Credit cash. That's incorrect. That's easy elimination. So the choices were between A and D. And uh, A is the correct answer. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional resources, multiple choice lectures. That's going to help you with your adjustments. At this point, we're going to put all the adjustments together on a worksheet. Examine that worksheet. Make sure we review everything that we did. And from the final worksheet, from the final adjusted column, we can prepare the financial statements. Invest in yourself. Farhat Lectures is always here to help and stay safe.